You are now tuned in to the War Party Paranormal Radio Show, where we will be discussing actual audio and visual clips captured during the team's investigations. Hear first-hand eyewitness accounts from fellow team members and special guests. Now smash that like, subscribe, and follow button, and let's get ready to welcome team leader and your host, Eric Vanderlaan, and tech specialist and co-host, Mike Del Coro. What is up, my paranormal peeps? Happy Monday. I hope everyone had a good weekend. I know Mike and I got some serious um, ghost hunting withdrawals. Um, we're yep. due for one soon. Um, we sure. don't know when, but I'm Eric. I'm Eric Vanderlaan, your host of the War Party Paranormal Show and team leader of War Party Paranormal Radio. And then the guy in the hat over there. With the hey, good evening, said. ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Mike Del Coro. I'm a tech specialist and case manager with War Party Paranormal. And uh, we got a great show for you guys tonight. One of my... Uh, one of my favorite places, and I'm going to let Eric uh, tell you guys what we're getting into. We got a huge treat tonight for you guys. Um, so if you got some friends that like the paranormal and they're not in this chat right now, go tell them to hop on because we're going to be going live to the Sorrell Weed House in Savannah, Georgia. Right, Mike? That's right. I mean, and live. Yeah, no, this place is... You know, Joe introduced me to this place, and me and him went and investigated there, and it was it was mind blowing. It was awesome. It's a very and spooky you, history. Yep. And if you guys don't know about Savannah, Georgia, I mean, it's one of the most haunted places in the U.S. And the Sorrell Weed House is probably the most haunted place in Savannah. Um, never been there, but it's on my bucket list. Um, we got some team guests on our show as well. Um, we're gonna they're gonna be on the show because. They've been to um, the Sorrell Weed House. We got Franny and Joe. Um, so they're going to talk about their experiences. We're going to show some evidence that they caught. Um, and we also have Aubrey from the hey, Sorrell Weed Kyle. And she's there live. She's actually doing an event right now. Um, they're just getting started. And then after we bring her on, she's going to be walking around live and anything can happen in the Sorrell Weed House. Right, Mike? That's right. All right. So... I'm not going to waste any more time, and I'm going to play the intro. Let's do it. You ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. All right. This house is one of the most haunted, actively haunted locations in the entire country. So not a lot of places can claim that. And so working here some days are like, oh, hey, it's pretty chill. And then there's some days where you experience stuff that... You know, you thought that you would never, ever experience here. And I think that's what really makes this house truly As soon as I opened the doors to the lower levels to let people take photos, a woman just ran out of the room practically in hysteria. And I sat her down to wonder what was going on. And she was basically explaining to me that she's a full-on skeptic. They just went for the architecture and the history. But as I was talking by the table, she saw a full-bodied apparition for a split second right next to me. And she was freaking out. Her husband had to calm her down. And just her, like, reaction alone was probably one of the creepiest things that's happened to me on one of my tours so far. I want all that. I want those REM pods. I want the millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> Give it all. So 
Yeah, so we're going to have Aubrey tonight. She's at the Sorrel Weed House. Um, she's actually working at an event there. They're just, I think they, she told me they have like 24 people there. So she, we're going to be at live at the Sorrel Weed House, and she's going to walk around, possibly give us a little tour. We'll never know what happens. Whatever happens, it's going to be a big surprise. We're just winging it. We're playing it by ear, and that's the best part, right? Yeah, that's what makes it fun, right, Mikey? That's right. All right, so we're not going to waste any more time, and we're going to bring Aubrey on. Bam. Hey, Aubrey. Hey, Aubrey. Thanks for coming on during your hectic night. No problem. Not a problem at all. It's always hectic here. If it's not the living, it's the dead. That's, That's right. True. Yep. So um, you guys got an event going on tonight, right? Yep. We've got uh, currently a tour that just went underway. So fingers crossed that goes well. And then we just had a really unique event last night for an investigation that kind of stirred some stuff up. Our spirits oh, nice. were expecting something to change and change can be scary whether even even if it's been 200 years so then that's it so people that don't know what um the Soro weed house could you give them a little bit of history and actually tell them what you do there sure uh so my job here is actually the lead paranormal investigator we do host uh, investigations on the weekends where people can be a ghost hunter for a night we give you equipment teach you how to use it you'll get a brief history very brief your job is to figure all that extra detailing out and then we'll set you loose for two hours so i'm in charge of teaching everyone how to properly interact with the dead safely and in a very respectful manner because they are That's nice awesome. to let me stay employed here yeah uh, as for the sorrel weed house it was an 1840s greek revival mansion built for a gentleman by the name of francis sorrel and his second wife matilda moxley Mm -hmm. They did have kind of a rocky relationship. Matilda was actually his second wife. The first wife was Lucinda, Matilda's older sister. Older sister, unfortunately, passed away. Francis, being a gentleman in the 1800s, needed another wife to care for the children, care for the home. So went on to marry Matilda. She covered the wifely duties, unfortunately, all of them, including providing Francis with eight children when they got to the home. Uh, and then after that, it continued to be a family home. It went on to be sold to the Weed family, which is how we get the Sorrel Weed. Then it kept kind of changing from a uh, personal private home to antique store, to a hair salon, to a dress shop. And now at some point, we became a house museum offering tours. Oh, okay. Awesome. And we have had some of our... I've never been there, but it's definitely on my bucket list. So... Hopefully, I'll be meeting you soon. Um, We're always here. <laughs> but yeah, we've had a few of our team members, including Mike over here, um, that has been in the Sorrel Weed House. Um, I believe we have Joe. Joe's been like, what, several times, right, Mike? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. Um, so what kind of activity do you normally get there? Like any type of spirits that normally show up there um, that are regulars, possibly? So we actually uh, have discovered a lot about our spirits. Depending on the day, we have anywhere between 10 to 15, sometimes further up than oh, that. Wow. We're still trying to get an actual number gauge on them. Mm -hmm. On a slow day, uh, we do get a lot of more internal feelings and personal experiences. So different smells, like the smell of cigar smoke, despite being a non-smoking property. Smell of ladies' perfume that's there for a split second, then gone. Uh, internal feelings of emotions, uh, headaches, dizziness. We've had people occasionally pass out. We frequently have people pass out. I had a guy get a nosebleed once out of nowhere. So that's usually the smaller side. Um, on a crazy night, we'll have footsteps, cabinet doors opening, closing. Guests have seen full-bodied apparitions and shadow figures walking around. Disembodied voices quite frequently. So we've got pretty much any type of experience you can imagine at this point. And, yeah, yeah. and um, it was actually yeah. really neat when I did go, because I went with a good friend and team member, Joe, and he's a big fan of Savannah, and he's a history buff. So it was like having my own personal tour guide, you know, when I was there, because he can he kind of explained a lot of the stuff to me and a lot of the history, and it was it was very cool. Um, and we actually have Joe and, and Franny on um, in backstage there. And do you want to bring those uh, guys in? Yeah, let's bring them on. Bam and bam. <laughs> hey, there you are. You're on the bench <laughs> <laughs> with Forrest. Forrest is whispering sweet nothings into my ear. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> Do you want some uh, chocolate? I love that background. <laughs> <laughs> I 
So yeah, that just for you guys that don't know that that uh, that bench was filmed very close to Surreal Weed House right there in one of the squares. It's no longer there. It's in a museum now, but um, yeah. And if you go to Chippewa Square, you will not find the bench there. And you will also notice if you watch the film 150 times like I have, tracks move in the same way in the in real life as it does in the film. They had to redirect traffic for film purposes. So another little fun fact. There you go. I didn't know that. Damn, Joe, you know everything. <laughs> I'm full of question. useless information. Oh, bonus question, bonus. Joe. We got a bonus question. So, what house when the feather dropped down? Where was that located? Which house was that? Wasn't that the uh, wasn't that the church? Um, that's God. I forget the name of it. That's on the corner. You see, like the steeple, the big white church. Um, we actually, I think we actually parked there. Um, not not the time that we went, Mike. We because because Savannah's funny with the parking, and it's uh, as soon as you pass cross that street, like that parking is like a dollar an hour <laughs> for up to like the full time, and then cross the other way. But uh, God, I forgot the name of that uh, that church there. Um, so I, the church was going to be St. John's, and then the house was actually the Sorrell Weed House. We got paid for that. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. really? Nice. Very interesting. Awesome. Maybe um, some of the spirits like Forrest Gump. You never know. <laughs> we should do a. I didn't get that on the. I didn't get that on the day tour when I took it too, because I've see, I've t- I've done yeah. I've done two investigations there. I've done the day tour, and I can't get enough of that place. I, I just, I just love walking. It's through. and there's there's some there. cre- really creepy history there too that goes on beyond just the, um, the family members that lived in the house. Like that whole square and area is is it was built on top of. Um, a lot of graves and and different soldiers from some some of the wars, right? Right, guys. Going back Revolutionary War, right? Correct. A lot. And lot was of, it the, uh, siege, siege of Savannah, right? That's what uh, occurred right yeah. across the street, right? Bloodiest it, hour in the Revolutionary War. Yeah. And wasn't there a uh, the owner? brother or something practicing uh, medicine and like doing surgeries and stuff like to help uh, during the war or something in the basement? So not for the war. This was just a basic practitioner. Uh, his name was Dr. Frank Sorrell. He was the first wife, Francis's younger son from the first marriage. Uh, and he was actually a very skilled trauma surgeon. A lot of people will tell you stories about how he had a survival rate of 5% or something along those lines. But a little lesser known fact is that he actually studied in Princeton, graduated from college, traveled to Europe to study their medical science, and had the lowest mortality rate almost in the entire nation at the time, with about a 50% survival rate. That's amazing. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And has yeah, anything like, tragic happened in the Sorrell Weed House? <laughs> yeah. Well, <okay. laughs> like, what's the major thing? So the most common story that you're going to hear is uh, March 27th of 1860, Matilda, the lady of the home, was going to host a very extravagant party. For these parties, she would have seek out the head assistant or head enslaved by the name of Molly. We don't know what her actual name was. That was never documented, mm-hmm. but we do notice that she does respond to Molly. It's kind of just what we gave her and she acknowledges it. Uh, Molly okay. would have most likely tended to these parties, made sure that they were perfect. Molly was missing. Matilda searched, couldn't find her. Last checked what would have been Molly's private bedroom. Went into the bedroom, found Molly, but supposedly Frances Rell, her husband, was sexually abusing her. And this would have most likely gone on for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Matilda then left the bedroom, was next to on the top balcony of the main home. And per Frances and what he had on the death certificate, she had an accident facing over the balcony conveniently falling and it took her about 10 hours before she died due to head trauma oh wow yeah and then just to kind of throw the ice cream on top if you will fast forward about two weeks rumor has it molly was missing again supposedly the family tried to find her last check the bedroom and then this time she was found hanging from one of the rafters now as an enslaved person she's property so there was no death certificate or anything like that right. uh, but what we know about history especially with the enslaved it's a strong belief that she was most likely murdered by Francis Sorrell. Uh, and some psychic mediums have actually taken our towards a number of times throughout the years and pinpointed that she may have been pregnant. Okay. So there's okay. a lot of extra detailing in there, but 
again, based on documentation, it's all kind yeah, of blurry. I mean, Francis muddied a lot of stuff out for us. I mean, but think about it too, right? In the 1800s, you're, you're, you're this really wealthy family, you're a prestigious family and you have one of the most, you know, one of the nicest homes and you're throwing this big extravagant party and, and then to find your husband doing something with one of the enslaved people like that, she must have really been, you know, it's like traumatizing, right? And then, you know, she, we don't know, right? We don't know what really happened if she was pushed out of the window, she threw herself out of the window or what happened um, if they were fighting and then she ended up going out of the window, right? We Nobody really knows that part of it. Um, but there's, I mean, I can just imagine the energy that is still left in the home from, from those events, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then, Aubrey, we have, weird, but. Aubrey, we have a lot of people in the chat that are paranormal investigators. So they're like, Hmm, we want to go there and investigate too. But, um, how did you get into the paranormal? Was it from working at the Sorrel weed house? Did you have an experience earlier? So, um, uh, my story actually dates back to when I was two years old. Uh, I grew up in a house in Maryland. This was built in the 1980s. Nothing old or scary or anything like that um, mm -hmm. but my home life was kind of rocky i spent a lot of time by myself and my mom couldn't afford a babysitter mm -hmm. and eventually at some point i started talking about a little boy named frank my mom kind of just assumed that i made frank up as like a little coping mechanism with an imaginary friend right and then eventually i got to the point where she would let me go outside and play with other children and we'd do things like not thinking about ticks or snakes running behind the houses and there's one day i came across a little random cemetery behind one of the houses didn't think of anything of it went back to playing and didn't say anything i didn't think it was necessary kept seeing frank kept seeing frank moved out would still go back because my grandmother still owns the house and i'd still see frank then when i was older i moved back i was about 18 when i moved back into the house actually i even stayed in my old bedroom frank was still there mm -hmm. uh, but at that point i realized he's not an imaginary friend at all no i've been talking to a ghost for the past you know, 18 years of my life, practically. And then I went back to the old cemetery that I found, figured out who he was, uh, told my grandmother about it. She went to the Historical Society of the county, found more documentation about him and the family and where the house would have sat when it was initially there. Apparently, the property in the entire neighborhood was an apple orchard plantation. Uh, and he was one of the sons from that prominent family at the time. Wow. So, oh, okay. No, my haunting state way before this. Uh, I moved to Savannah when I was about 22, worked in some maybe familiar names, uh, the Marshall House and Kehoe House. Okay. Uh, not doing anything paranormal there, but still haunted locations nonetheless. Then was like, let me see if I can make a living in the paranormal field. Found my way here, and apparently it can, and I love it. <laughs> you hiring? <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm moving up there, Aubrey. Right. Pack my bags. Yeah, that's that's you my. Can, you need a place to stay. We've actually are still working on restoring the upper level, so you can. Do yeah, we haven't got to make it to the upper level oh, yet. Really? So I always yeah. wanted to see what it's like up there. Yeah. We should have it done by 2025. So you can stay there, and if you survive for an entire week, great. We'll be open then. How soon awesome. can I move in? Now. Pack okay. Back. I'll start packing right now. Seriously, I'm moving. I'm looking for a place to stay. I'm going to go up okay. to Savannah. We've definitely got a lot of really <laughs> interesting haunted homes here. I officially moved to Savannah uh, in December and seemed like a normal house. Mm -hmm. No, but haunted. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. So, um, oh, we lost for Annie. She'll be yeah. back. Um, She's like a ghost sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> just teasing so what's yeah. like the kind of activity that you guys normally get over there at the Soro Weed House so standard activity um, at least for the staff since you're going to be the first one setting up the house by yourself you're going to be the last one closing down by yourself uh, we do definitely get a fair amount of noises uh, footsteps and furniture moving even though you know you're the only one on the property is very very common Seeing figures in your peripherals will be very, very common. Um, people play favorites. Whether you're alive or dead, you tend to play favorites. Same goes for our spirits. They usually have a favorite staff member. And mm -hmm. as for me, I don't know. I can't speak on behalf of the other rest of the staff, but I have my favorite spirits that I prefer over the others. No offense to some of them, but it's true. 
Uh, so when you have your favorites, they'll generally be more interactive with you as well, including like physical touching quite a bit. You know, it's actually, uh, I've seen a lot of photos from there, too. You guys capture, uh, people capture a lot of photos of, of apparitions mm -hmm. and different things. Mm -hmm. And we just had Josh Purvis on uh, not long ago. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Um, he has a show called Searchers with Shane Pittman. Um, mm -hmm. that was, that, and he was telling us a story how he got into the paranormal. And he took that tour. And he took a picture and he got an apparition in it. Ever since that, he was like stoked and it got him into the paranormal. And now he's working with Shane Pittman and doing all this stuff. And it all started from the surreal weed house. Yeah, yeah my, we definitely my, get a lot of pictures. My first, my first visit to the surreal weed house, we hadn't even started yet. We were standing in the courtyard um, before the tour, before, you know, because before you go into the carriage house to get the opening stuff. And, uh, we're just hanging out, snapping photos, and and I'm snapping photos towards the French doors that lead down to the basement level. And uh, I captured a I captured a full body apparition on one of the on one of the pictures there. I don't know if Mike has it there or Eric. Um, I, I, had, I, uh... I, I, I wish I would have looked for it, uh, but it's 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 an amazing place, and 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 I'm super jealous that you get to be there day in and day out you know for especially for this like where are you oh, in what, you know. <laughs> what part of the house there are you, you in now you're in the carriage house right that's where the oh, hanging man. happened oh they're down yeah. she's in the basement baby <laughs> oh that is the carriage house oh there we go all right you're in the carriage house so the yeah the carriage house and it has those it's like a uh, two stories and then uh, yeah so uh i'm in the lower section right now which is where they would have stored the horse carriages uh, let's see. Then up here would be the living quarters for the enslaved that the Sorrells owned. Joe, you had a, a, a pretty wild experience up there, right? Yeah, the uh, first time, first time I went, I was uh, we we went for Halloween, twenty uh, twenty. It was like height of COVID, um, and it was the the night before Halloween. And uh, we are walking. I think we started in in the uh, carriage house upstairs, and um, it may have been even you, Aubrey, <laughs> to be honest, uh, uh, giving the information of what was going on up there. And I'm there with my buddy Javi um, and another two two people because I think there was only twelve people at the time doing groups uh, groups of four. Um, so everyone's hanging back. So and I start walking towards Molly's room. And as I get to the threshold of Molly's room, I felt like somebody just big just ran up behind me and like just stood over me, like just like lumbering that I I felt them. I turned around. And I looked back and I thought it was my I thought it was my buddy Javi. And I'm like, I was like, did you just run off? He's like, dude, I haven't moved. And he was he was just leaning up against the wall. Um, and and I, I was told that that's uh, a very common occurrence up there, especially with uh, white males, um, because of the protector uh, spirit uh, enslaved person. I guess uh, what, I don't know what you guys call him. I forgot uh, the name that I was told, but um, I remember I was just like, like holy crap! Like <laughs> like that was intense, and it was we were literally hadn't started anything. We were just getting the rundown. Um, of what's going on in there, it was it was really impressive. And just so you, yeah, we definitely got quite a few spirits on the property. Uh, I had a similar situation actually about a year ago. I had a guest ask me my personal thoughts on Molly's death, and apparently, I may have just maybe they just I don't know if she didn't want to be reminded of it or what. But I had a similar situation where. I, it felt like someone rushed me, and I was like, I am going to get knocked out. I'm going to get pushed down the stairs. Um, but note made, I learned from my lesson, and so now generally I don't go into, I don't want a reminder, so I don't talk about it with my guests upstairs. I'm like, if you have questions, you can ask me in the safety of the courtyard right. outside. Lesson learned. And, you yes. know, Joe, Joe's actually, you know, sensitive, and he's a, a, a bit of a psychic. And... He gives free hugs. <laughs> and Not uh... that night. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they thought you were. That's why they were running after you. Uh, yeah. Not, not, not with that big dude. Because I know it was a dude, and I know it was, it was a big, it was a big dude, and he, yeah. and he rushed me, and 
I, I freaked out. I was, I was like, what? Like my eyes were, <laughs> you know, I was, I was, I was, I was, what time is it? I was pooping my pants a little bit. Uh, and we hadn't even started the night really. Um, so uh, that's, you know, if, if that's just an impression that you get, and we were literally there for about five minutes um, and this went down. So you can imagine how the rest of the night went. Right. So the, one of the wildest things that happened when, when I was there with Joe was we were in the basement and they have a little hallway that they call shadow man alley or, or, or something of that. Shadow nature. Man yeah. Shadow, shadow man breezeway. Yep. And, so I'm standing there and I'm looking down the hallway and it's dark, you know, and, and they do have security cameras set up and you can live so you can like log in and check it out. So there's only like a little bit of IR light, but it's it's pretty dark. And Joe's like, I, I see somebody standing at the end of that hallway. What's going on over there? Anything? We're just walking around. Did you hear something? Just, just checking stuff. Just checking. Just Nothing. It's, just, nothing. it's nothing. It's another day in paradise. Oh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe's telling me, like, I see somebody standing at the end of that hallway. And, you know, they have, like, drapes over the windows to kind of block out any of the light from the street or anything like that. So it's pitch black. And I'm like, I don't, I don't see anything. But I grabbed my camera, and I, a full-spectrum camera, and I set it down, like, on the floor there. And Joe's like, I still see. And he's like, I see him moving this way. And I'm like, all right, well, we'll check the footage later. And then I did, and I, I studied it extra hard. I probably would have missed it if I didn't. But since Joe was telling me that he saw something there, um, I really looked at it like extra, extra careful. And, and that's, back, that's back when you didn't believe me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, it's hard. It's hard. Trust Are me. It's hard. <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm very skeptical. He's like, nah. I mean, I but this this was the it. first time that Joe said, I see somebody there. That happen and, to me? I, and I took my camera there. And I looked at it, and and I found something. And this has happened multiple times, but this is the first time. I'll, I'll throw it up there real quick. Uh, it's a, from a TikTok clip, so there's some that music, like you know, TikTok music it's going my on. Favorite. There. So that was that was pretty wild. Yeah, definitely. Aubrey, you yeah. sent me a video with the door slamming. Mm -hmm. yeah. How recent was that? So uh, that was actually like I had mentioned earlier. When you're the last staff member on the property, your job is to close up by yourself. So turn off all the lights, make sure everything's locked, good to go. That's what I was doing. I was by myself on the property. I was in the basement April. specifically. And kind of just getting ready to shut everything down. And when I was making my way around the staircase, it sounded like a door had slammed. Uh, and I could pinpoint which door it was. And the thing about that door is it has a lock latch. So that would imply that someone was inside the basement with me, unlocked the door, slammed it, relashed it without me noticing. And let's say for skeptics, maybe, well, there's someone on the other side of the door that I didn't realize that just bang the door really loud. Well, outside of that door is a locked gate, and outside of that is another gate. So there's no way anyone could access that door whatsoever. Uh, and it was loud enough that it did startle me. I screamed some profanities. <laughs> I realized I said some profanities in front of children. Granted, they've been dead for 200 years, but still. <laughs> so I apologized, and then I continued closing down the house like nothing happened. <laughs> This lady's got a mouth like a sailor. <laughs> but I got a clip that you sent me that I'm going to play. You guys ready to see it? Yeah, heck yeah. yeah let's do it. Do it. I'll play it one more time. That was loud. A little pee might have came out if I was walking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I also cool. shared some pictures that are pretty cool. Um, let's see. Which one's first? 
So I believe it's this one. So Aubrey, do you want to like tell people like what we're lo what we're looking here in the like in this picture? So uh, we get a, quite a few guests that, or not even just guests, but people in general, if they're not as familiar with the paranormal field, think that ghosts only come out at night. Uh, and I was really excited about this one when I got it in because this was taken during a history and architecture tour. This lady wanted here for ghosts. She wanted to learn about the Greek revival style and what it was like living mm -hmm. in the 1800s. Uh, and she decided to take a picture of the creepy baby in the display case. Mind you, that is just a random creepy baby that has no tie to the property whatsoever. We, I think, got it at a thrift store. <laughs> so we just threw it in there. And in the reflection where that circle, that red circle is, uh, there was that figure standing in the background. You can see everyone else pretty clearly. You can see the colors of their outfits, their skin tones, their hair. This yeah. figure seemed to be fairly solid grayish black. Uh -huh. And if you zoomed in on it, you can kind of see the couch that's by the window. And her legs are actually inside the couch based oh. on the fun oh, cool. hairstyle and that she's looking outside the window on the main floor. Yeah. Uh, we do believe that it's most likely Matilda Sorrell, the second wife who would have been the primary lady of the home at the time. Uh, we do have paintings and portraits and pictures of her where she does represent that lovely symbol up to buns. So we think that's kind of our safe right now. Wow. That's a, that's a nice cool. capture. Yeah. I want to know who's wearing that hat in the middle of the picture. It's a cool hat, too. Okay, I, I thought that was <laughs> uh, yeah, Franny has to think about that. It looks like I she has like, like a, I love hats. Like yeah. a bun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. The, the hair is like up like a bun like that. Yeah. That's really hey Joe, cool. I just sent you a message there. Yeah, I got, I, I'm I'm searching for it. I'm gonna have to pull it from my Instagram. Um, no worries, no worries. Yeah. Um, Eric, we're so we're actually speeding right along. Wow, yeah, we're going play, really fast. You want to play the? Uh, the did clip you just hear play? something, Aubrey? I saw you like. I did, I did, did and it really? startled me. Um, I don't know what it was. It kind of sounded like if you took a metal dish tray and dropped it on a cement floor. Oh, really? Um, yeah. it was like that little da -da 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 noise. Right. I'm by this myself in the carriage house, so I'm like, okay. I was so freaking jealous. I know. Right it's on so the cool. I was so dealing with cool. situations with Molly upstairs, which is why I'm no longer up there. She wanted her space, so I came back down to grant her that. Well, Aubrey, we're gonna. This show is going really fast. I mean, because your place is so incredible. I mean, you wouldn't have enough time in the evening to cover everything, but. We're at that halfway mark where we got to pay our bills. So we're going to pay our bills. And then after that, we're going to show some evidence that our team caught. Okay. You HuntersStore.com. We got a nice little sponsorship worked out with them. We're going to be doing some giveaways, so stay tuned. Very, very cool, and go check them out at TheGhostHunterStore.com. Peace. Also, guys, they are now selling the Delco goggles at the at the uh, Ghost Hunter store. So, if you want to purchase your own set, you can get them there. You get them you fast. Get, They're going to go fast. Promo code Ghost Gone Wild. Uh, on checkout, you'll get a pair, you'll get a discount on your purchase. What's up, my paranormal people? Eric and Mike here from the War Party Paranormal Radio Show, wanting you to remember the importance of hydration. Remember, we hunt ghosts. We don't want to turn into ghosts. Dehydration can lead to inflammation and even degenerative disease. So hydration is crucial. 
Whether you're up all night investigating the paranormal, sky watching, or Bigfoot, Fuel Up Hydration System is designed to support motivation, concentration, and rejuvenation with the best immune enhancing delivery system available today. Experience the benefits of Fuel Up with their Feel the Difference money back guarantee. Visit fuelup.gg forward slash warparty for their special offer that includes free shipping. Fuel, Fuel up, up for life. life. Hey, Eric, how do we do? It's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we should stick to hunt and go. I don't know if uh, commercials is our thing. True that. Eric, why don't you tell the people real quick about the uh, trailer we have for the Haunted Files, and then we'll get back to it. All right. So, yeah, Mike and I are working really hard to bring you season two, and we just finished episode one. So later on, that's going to be starting, and we're also going to be coming up with the Halloween special. But in the meantime, we want to give you guys some sneak peeks for those of you that haven't seen the Haunted Files, the episodes that are already out now. Um, on Paraflix. So go check them out. And if you don't have a subscription, um, use the Haunted Files 25. That's our discount code. You get 25% off your annual subscription. So let's let this thing roll. And actually, we're going to, this video is going to have Franny in it since she's on the show. And that was the Denim House. This was a two part series, and this was a freaking crazy investigation. So here we go. I don't know if what's scarier, the uh, the possible ghosts or Eric's driving. Goes <laughs> down here, man. Come on, dude, that was funny. <laughs> I hear real nauseous. Creaked open. Down there, I heard like footsteps. I thought it was going for No, nobody's going to lose anyone. I think I felt your pain. With your cravings. Sarah, do you like haunted? Oh, yeah. They say it's the most haunted place here. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, Aubrey, we're going to have to do an um, episode there at the Sorrel Weed House. By all means. We'll have to talk to you guys about that later. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, so what's going on in there? Um, I was curious what would happen if I put a REM pod next to Melissa Lynn. Oh, Melissa Lynn. Going off. I don't like Melissa cool. Lynn. Um, it's going well. <laughs> Interesting. Hi, Melissa Lynn. Is Melissa haunted, or is she a trigger object? Trigger object. Ooh, okay. Someone likes the doll. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. There you Good go, day. folks. You're getting it. Paranormal Very Activity cool. live at the Sorrel Weed House with Aubrey. Look at that thing. It's still going. Yeah. Soon. That's crazy. Let me see if I can get them to do it. Hey, guys, can you please stop real quick? Can you hold off the rim pod? No, I'm pretty sure they're angry because I'm wearing a skirt. <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs> Please. <laughs> We're going to see what happens. But, Why are you dressed like yeah. that in my uh, house? <laughs> <laughs> I frequently get lectured by the original owners on my provocative outfits. Well, tell mm -hmm. them this is yep. the millennium now. It's go. different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the 1800s anymore. It's different. <laughs> the later they need to their ankles now. <laughs> and it's hot in Savannah. Sure. You should know that. It's <laughs> so what room are you in now? I'm currently in the women's parlor. So Okay. Is that the first floor? Yes, main floor right now. Oh, very nice. It looks spooky. 
So our big thing for the parlors. Franny had something happen there, actually. Is is there a piano there? Is that the piano one, or is that the women's and the men's? That's the men's. I think think the men's, yeah. Which is right across the hall here. Oh, right there. There you go. So, yeah. Aubrey, we got a clip. Sorry to cut you off, Aubrey. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a clip we want to show you regarding the piano. Okay. Yeah, that was my best capture at the Sorrel Wheat House. That was pretty cool. I'm going to play that. Yeah. You ready? Let's do it. All right. Now, where did I put it? Yeah, okay. Here we go. Bam. So, in the parlor rooms, there's a piano, and no one is allowed to touch this piano because it's really old and really fragile. And I was on, it's in the men's side of the parlor room for one. And I was with everybody else on the women's side. And I thought at first that it was somebody's phone going off because it just sounded like piano keys kept getting hit. And then I was like, that can't be somebody's phone because it, it was just too too much like a piano. So I look over and I was like, someone's got to be playing it. So I look over and there's nobody standing next to the piano at all. And then everyone else in the room was kind of just like looking around like, is someone playing the piano? <laughs> and... Then I started freaking out, and I was asking everybody if they had heard it, because I was like, I'm not just hearing things, like everyone else is hearing it too. So everyone else was definitely hearing this piano we played. I recall there was a piano there, and I asked, hey, can somebody play me a note, or whatever was along those lines. And surely enough, I recall like maybe a couple seconds later, there was literally a piano note being, you know, hit, like, bing! And I got so startled and shocked. I'm like, oh my God, did you guys hear that? Did you guys hear that? You got me playing the piano for me? Oh my God. Did you do this? Yeah, I got really excited when I heard that. I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, clearly you can hear that, but yeah. So tell us um, about your your um, investigation when you went. Oh, I mean, what was that? Like eight years ago. It was, a, ago, right? it was a, a long time ago. Oh, look, I'm wearing my, my Sorrel Weed House shirt too, by the way. I think that guy that was oh, in the video, go. like create the time, they're like selling these shirts and I'm like, oh, I'm getting one. Um, but yeah, it was a long time ago, but definitely that place does not disappoint. I would go again and, um, definitely check it out. I think I would do it private this time. Uh, even though I felt like it was the group I was with was private. Obviously I didn't have anybody else. Like everybody I knew that was like when you guys separated people in groups or something like that. Uh, but overall we captured really good evidence and it's just a really, really cool place with with a lot of history. Okay. That's pretty wild to capture that on the SB7 spirit box. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. And then... And then you, Joe, and Mike experienced similar activity. Um, I believe it was in the stairwell. Is that is that near you, Aubrey? The st- that stairwell. The uh, yeah, main staircase. Sorry, the gentleman's parlor does not. You can't get out that way. Oh, okay. So stairwell number one. Or- oh, there you go. That's no, number sure. one, I think. Right. Yeah. That's the one. So, Aubrey, um, getting a piano key on the spirit box is pretty wild, right? We definitely know how to manipulate the spirit box very easily. Um, Yeah. We've had people, even without spirit boxes or equipment, audibly hear uh, different instruments playing, piano, guitar, violin, drums. Uh, So that's something where, again, it's something that everyone should be hearing, but when we get just the personal audible, it's usually one or two people that will hear, hear that. And as far as I'm concerned, that definitely validates it as paranormal, because if we all hear it, it, we could potentially push it off as it was someone's phone or it was mm-hmm. something outside. Like, but definitely a lot it of happens more than that. often there, right? That's like one of the common mm-hmm. things that mm-hmm. happens. So I got a clip from that stairwell that... Um, Actually, Joe, Mike, and Franny captured, and I'm going to play that. Anyone on? 
off. Um, what I mean is not so much about the EMF. What I mean is about the vibration. There's also a vibration tool, a sensory tool on the Yeti. And the vibration went off. I think to a maximum of like two lights to three lights. So anywho, um, you'll see that being captured. Let's go ahead and play the video real quick. Right. So um, it could have been Nino me walking through room, but again, you have to be like really close to that eddy in order for that to go, you know, the vibration to go off like that. So he wasn't near the eddy at the time. As you can see, he was walking towards the office room, which is literally across the way. Yeah, like watching the trip work. Shut your mouth. Oh my god. right fun, fun fact i think that was the first time the tripwire was ever used in there i got it as soon as it came out and uh and i brought it with us on that trip so pretty neat. hey real quick i just want to give a big shout out to james from cross the line paranormal he's always supporting us on like everything all our social media and he's even got his teammates here so welcome guys to the group and um hopefully we'll be seeing you on our, on our future monday shows so i just want to give a shout out to them yeah, absolutely. We appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So anything interesting happening over there, Aubrey? Uh, I still got the REM pod occasionally going off here and there, spiking oh, really? at me. Uh, once the my tour downstairs heads out, we can start to move into the basement if we've got time for it, and we'll see how that's going. Um, I'm dealing with some light flickering right now. They're not too happy. I'm since I'm in the gentleman's parlor. I, they I noticed strong that. No go, yeah. and I'm sitting crisscross. So, oh my gosh, um, how dare you? are breaking I? all I'm the rules. <laughs> well, actually, I got a clip in that room that you're gonna like. You want to see it? I would love Here to see go. it. I'm always curious. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> Maybe they'll hear it through the video and they'll like trick or something. Here we go. To do me a favor, improve. Hold on. I'll, this is actually across the hall in the study. Oh, that's a study? Okay. Yeah. I've never been there, folks. <laughs> you got to guide me, Mike. So when I was there, the I can't remember her name, but the lady that was kind of like setting everything up and telling us, she said that this room is not the most active. But for some reason, I felt compelled to go into that room because I spend a lot of time in my office, in my study, right? Um tech aka my garage um <laughs> so i figured maybe i can get a connection in does, there because it's an area active. where i spend a lot of my time and i'm i assumed that the owner spent a lot of time there as well and do you want to show us around a little bit in there uh, this is actually generally where we start our ghost tours uh so we've got an break. Ooh, sure. no. matilda over there, we've got Francis, original owners, um, and we've got a couple of different ghost tours. We'll take pictures of them over the years. And then we've actually learned a lot through our investigations as well. So, for example, I found out that Francis is apparently left-handed. So I took it upon myself to fix up our desk over here and make sure the quill is on the left side of the desk. So we're full historical accuracy. Um, but it is actually a very inactive room. Uh, we do occasionally still get experiences, but 
but usually what we get here isn't residual energy. It's got to be some type of intelligent spirit, most commonly Francis. Uh, the most common energy that we do pick up on in here is uh, vertigo, and it has gotten so bad that we frequently get guests that will just pass out. Like, <laughs> they're fine, they're fine, they're fine. They're on the ground. And that's kind of a scary situation. I feel bad because I got to give my tour. So it's like, here's the water. Just stay there. <laughs> so I just keep walking. I'm like, I'm sorry, but also, I, if I had to stop for every single person that passes out, I wouldn't have a tour. So <laughs> make do. It's interesting too, because that actually kind of happened to me while we, when we went in there and we were getting, because, you know, we, get, we start off with, with a walkthrough, basically just explaining the different areas and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and Mike were in there and we're doing our thing. I'm hanging back and I started getting a little dizzy. He's like, You good? And I was like, I got to step out out of this room because um, I just started getting a little lightheaded. And um, I, never a dull moment in that place, I'll tell you. I, <laughs> Not so, at all. like I said, something was drawing me in there, and I went in there by myself, um, and I took my recorder to see if I can get any EVPs, and uh, and this is what we captured. To do me a favor and prove that I'm communicating with somebody intelligent or intelligent being, what color is this light that I have on my chest? Okay, it seems like you're starting to open up and communicate with me a little bit. I really appreciate that. Thank you. You want to hear something? Yes. You don't have to get that close. Shut your mouth. Oh, my God. Holy shit. I just started getting them to talk to me. That's what I've been trying to do all night. <laughs> that lady's <laughs> awesome. <I was> <laughs> <up>. <laughs> that, that's well, Mike's favorite people. person ever. Oh, God. <laughs> the funny part was she was trying to listen to it. You're like, back up. Like, I mean, like, you don't have to get too close. Well, well, it's also, you know, it's, it's also but COVID 60, too. Damn it. It's also COVID too, and everybody's like, you know, wants to get up close and hear it. He's oh like, yeah, you, back, back up. You can hear it from right there. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> that that lady was uh, on the sauce a little bit. Um, uh, <laughs> the funniest thing is, we were, we were right there where my background is in the carriage house, and I was sitting there, and she had a K2 meter in her hand, and she backed up, and there was like a a uh, shirt a shirt hanging on the wall and she backed up and it brushed her shoulder and she thought something touched her and she freaked out and did like a 360 and threw her k2 down the stairs and i was like <laughs> oh boy i'm sure you well, get a lot doing... of like crazy people sometimes because i know in my when i was there there were some drunk ladies i think they got kicked out of the tour actually and looking I mean, back you're... at the you're in a popular you're in a popular city with a lot of bars around right here you see all kinds of kinds oh no but i was so glad these girls were not in my group and i feel bad whoever was in the group with them but looking back at the live footage i could see why they got kicked out because i was curious i was like oh like i could tell like they weren't there halfway through the night well, while rotating and i look back and i think they're at the carriage house and like they're both like putting their legs like on the floor like against the stairwell like being super disrespectful obviously but it was just kind of like one of those things i can imagine like how many people you get like throughout the day that you have to 
do things like that or kick people out or you know what are the cases? something yeah aubrey you heard something in there um i got a couple of knocks and it's kind of windy out so i think it may be the window but there's a door that leads to the stairwell for downstairs that slightly cracked open and maybe somehow the wind is getting inside the house yeah and slightly pushing it in but you're like um, hmm, what could it be i'm i'm paying attention i also heard some noises in the parlors oh wow so i'm just like what you, would you think about that evp that yeah, would have terrified me. Uh, we've had similar situations where we do get stuff loud and clear like that. Where, I mean, I can handle a lot. Like, but if I'm by myself, and especially if I didn't have equipment and I heard that in my own ears, thanks, Francis. You had the house. Great. Bye. I'm just, <laughs> you wanted me gone with So right. I'm out. Uh, and even then, even with equipment, like some of the stuff that we can get, especially like when it's that loud and clear, it's great for the paranormal field that is a compelling amazing piece of evidence but also it's all fun and games until you're actually there and mind yeah. you i'm the one that's still sitting in the house right now so <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm jealous that's all right but we're here let everyone you. know they do have in a, the room. A, a, I'm right by the picture. <laughs> <laughs> well i did i did go to savannah and i did do the ghost the, the haunted um pub crawl so yeah so that's out there too but I, just real quick, we're at that point where our listeners who are listening to this show on the KGRA Digital Broadcasting Network, they're going to be moving on to their next show. And to those listeners, if you want to continue listening or watching, you can go to the War Party Paranormal YouTube page um, and you can watch us there or listen to us. Um, and for those of you that are on Facebook and YouTube, just remember that KGRA, I mean, they got some amazing shows. They talk about UFOs, MUFON, cryptids, Bigfoot, paranormal, mediumship, all kinds of things. So check them out. And, um, and then those of you who are listening, come and check us out. And every Monday night live, we always have an amazing guest. Um, and for those of you who are listening and watching, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. We appreciate that. It helps us. Um, how did I do, Mike? Did I, was I compliant? You did. You did perfect, sir. All right. Okay. Now we can have. Now the fun and games can begin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those were the clips that we got. Um, I don't know. I'm just really jealous. I'm like sitting there looking. <laughs> you in that room, and you're like looking around, like while we're talking, and I'm like, damn it. I want to it's be really, in there. It's really cool it's that really we can cool. like, show clips and she can walk around in the yeah. room. It's like a little tour. It's really pretty neep. Yeah. It brings me it's memories, so pretty, too. But it also... Terrifying. It's pretty and it's pretty terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> it is a very spooky place. That's the, beautiful. The basement is, is super spooky. Yeah. Now, now before, there's a vibe down there for sure. Before yeah. you head down there, um, mm -hmm. There's right before right, where, where it leads to the staircase is the dining room area. Mm -hmm. um, have you guys gotten anything in there? Because that's always an area like the, the couple times that I've gone for an investigation that I've never, you know, walked into. I only went there oh. during the daytime tour, um, but I never had a chance to investigate. And I mean, I do remember even during that daytime getting a vibe in there. Um but uh, do you know, have you ever had any experiences or heard anything um, in that dining room area? Uh, so for my own personal experiences, this one ties specifically to the dining room per se, but for the entirety of the property, it just so happened I was in the dining room when this happened. Uh, but we have a ghost cat, his name's Shadow. Cool. And I saw him uh, sitting on the balcony kind of looking in. And at the time I was the maid here, our last maid quit because she's apparently afraid of ghosts. I'm glad she picked this job. Uh, so I was mopping. She and lives in Savannah? My own cat. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can, I Aubrey, I can live there and I can do maid work. Good. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> and just so everyone knows, Savannah is very much a drinking town with a ghost problem. Yeah, big time. Um, so, you know, you got, your, you got your choice of spirits to... To, to choose from in, yeah, in Savannah. James, James said and, that I saw a lot of spirits there. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. 
And Actually, I, 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 tripped, I, I tripped over one of those bricks near the cemetery because you know how the bricks are like coming up because, you know, the ground's like unleveling <laughs> because all the buried <laughs> coffins and stuff that are there. Plus, uh, Eric is not the most agile of fellows. He's not the most I graceful. can be. Oh. Especially not in cemeteries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whenever I'm in a dark place, I'm always hitting my head and bumping my knee, doing all kinds of crazy things. Pretty clumsy. But <laughs> I do it for the ghost, Aubrey. <laughs> it's, great. it's great. I would highly recommend. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> now, about... go ahead. So I'm sorry. When you're the maid, you have to go after the tours. So I would be here until about 3 a.m. trying to clean. Um, oh, wow. That's where the fun begins, I'm sure. So that's where the craziness gets the in. Witching hour. Yeah. Now, for the people that are in the chat and they're watching, um, now can people go there and rent the place for the night? Like if they wanted so their team got, to go uh, there and investigate? We do have options. Uh, we have our standard investigations, which is what you guys took. Um, and then we do have lock ins. That okay. is completely customizable. You can pick how many people you want in your group. You can pick how long you want to stay on the property. You can have full range of all the equipment we already have on hand, and we're constantly mm -hmm. adding new equipment. So it's completely customizable up to what you want to do. So if you want to be here for only a couple hours, can cool. you leave the doll behind? If you want to be here for six hours, have fun, grab a couch, make yourself comfortable, <laughs> bring a blanket. But Aubrey, you got to leave that doll behind too. <laughs> I mean, <Cookie> doll. <laughs> I've still got the REM pad occasionally beeping at me. When I was in the gentleman's parlor in the study, it was quiet. And as soon as I got back to the doorway, it started going off again at me. So oh, wow. we actually so had her as a trigger item last night for an investigation. And I didn't use the REM pod at all. Uh, so she was just sitting in the chair by herself. A group hears a bang and they look over and she's tilting, hanging out of the chair. And then I already got issues with that doll. I'm fine with all the other dolls except for her. And I was like, if I had seen that doll move, and I had a similar situation where she did move on me. But she physically touched me. It wasn't okay. Uh, there was a hearse tour going on. You just hear me scream, oh, no. I throw her <laughs> I'm, so like, I'm loving it. I'm gone. <laughs> and you hear the hearse tour, like the tire screech. What's going yeah. on in there? <laughs> well, well, actually, <laughs> If you, if you listen really closely, you can hear the scream coming <laughs> from the surrounding yeah. house. The perfect song. Yeah. It's only what I wish for. <laughs> right? When you're doing like a ghost ride, it's like what you hope for. <laughs> Something yeah, crazy. Definitely. So I actually uh, got those photos from the first time Joe was there um, that he took. I'll pop them up. And uh, Joe, if you want to tell us about them. All right. So uh, there's a... If you could put the other one first, uh, Mike, that's a little okay. That one or this one? That one. So, this is obviously this is from the outside courtyard looking in down into the basement. Um, and from here, it doesn't look like much. Um, in the second pane on the right side door, you're gonna see some like a white area with a darker figure, like shape above it now if when you go into the zoomed in character uh photo the other one you could see that it actually looks like a woman in a dress mm -hmm. and yeah, you see in my opinion it looks like it could have been maybe an enslaved person um with a something wearing on their head um shoulders and then the dress going down. Yeah, because you can almost see, like, see the stairs or whatever that is, like the little strips of light behind, like where it's blocking it out, right? Yeah, that's like straight down. So there's like the staircases in the left, right in the center, basically, of the of the basement. And then the, the room opens up further uh, down that way. There's more windows. There's a big table down there where uh, equipment's set up. And um, yeah, that was that was literally... Just hanging out before we even started our tour, just goofing off, snapping pictures. Uh, my buddy Javi was uh, he, he he forgot his phone and he's like, you know, what do I do? And I was like, here's my phone, just snap pictures. Make sure you snap three at a time, you know, just every time, bum bum bum, every every time. And uh, sure as hell, we're we're back in the hotel room and reviewing this, and I was like, dude, and he's like, that's fucking crazy, bro. What the yeah. 
<laughs> he was that shitting his pants the entire time. He's not a, he is not a, a paranormal <laughs> investigator by any means, but uh, he, uh, he he does like tagging along every once in a while. That's Very awesome. cool. Very cool. All right. So we're getting towards that part of the show where we're getting towards the end. And Aubrey, can you tell people um, if you got any events well, coming I mean, up? Oh, wait, Actually, let's, let's head to the basement, right? Yeah, let's, I mean. Oh, the basement. I'm sorry. I'm jumping the gun. Sorry. We ain't done yet, folks. Sorry. We're not done yet. <laughs> the base. this is the best part. Best for life. Yeah, this is where the fun begins. Right. I walk into the creepy room. Creepy portal to hell. He's like, what uh, are you guys so, doing? I don't want to go in here. There we go. All right. I've never awesome. been in that room. Me neither. Right? They don't, they don't do we that. We actually the- found out... Um, we do have an enslaved girl. She responds to the name Leah, L-Y-I-A, and she apparently frequents that room with her potential younger brother, Charlie, who is also enslaved by the Strelitz. So the more investigations we host, definitely the more we learn about everyone uh, hmm. and the more information we can add to it. It's nice when the evidence can um, collaborate with the history. All right. So you can't really see me, but I'm down here. Uh, and then I'll, you know, I'll actually head to the breezeway first because that's what everyone recognizes. The creepy hallway. So, yeah. And then the you would have been over on this side. So it would have been right over yeah, the right? Yep. Facing that yep, way. That's yeah. where we got the shadow figure right there. And if you could show, if you could pan a little bit to the left, you could show that there's a wall there um, on, on the, the opposite side. side. That where where Mike captured that figure, I mean, there's there's a big brick wall there. On the other side of that wall, there's a big fireplace, um, and I mean, there's there's no way, there's no way, and it was only four of us um, down in the basement at the time when, yeah, when that was captured. Crazy. Yeah, that was that was that was amazing. Man, if as I much as I like the speed factor, I'm gonna ruin the speed factor. <laughs> so. I hope you can see where you're going. There you go. There we go. Is that wheelchair still down there? <laughs> oh man, I forgot. About that. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> is that in the surgery room? Yeah. Yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. <laughs> Why does every spooky place have a uh, haunted place um, have a spooky looking wheelchair? There he is, Doctor Frank. Gotta introduce Doctor Frank. Frank. Oh, He's a great funny. guy. I highly recommend, even with his survival rate of 50%. He actually cracked a guest back the other day uh, during an investigation. Oh, really? And Mike, yeah, very, very helpful man. You got a bad back. You need to yeah, go there. I could use that. <laughs> some assistance. I could use that. <laughs> and now there's, uh, there, uh, there are children uh, spirits that like to hang out down there in that room and hang under the, the operating table, right? Or from what I was told. Uh, so... We have a little girl named Sarah. Through our investigations and conversations, uh, we discovered her name, Sarah Amelia Weed, which may sound familiar with the Sorrel Weed, Weed house. The, the second owners of the house. So Sarah Amelia would have been the second owner's granddaughter. Mm-hmm. And she still is definitely very active down here. I call her our social butterfly, because if you're going to hear a voice, if you're going to see movement, if you're going to be touched, anything at all, if you're down here, it's probably her. Uh, she likes to play hide and seek as her favorite game. So she'll mm-hmm. hide underneath the surgical room, under the couch, and with the top of the like even the living room, anywhere she can hide is what she'll do. And then if she thinks that you found her, she'll usually let you know, um, most commonly by grabbing your ankle, which I think is great. Because if I get some bulky, strong man that's like a skeptic, that's like, I'm not afraid of a ghost. He's like, oh, God, I've got you. And I'll see that when you start running. <laughs> Love it. That's I wish awesome. I wish my buddy Javi was on this chat right now because that's exactly what happened to him oh, cool. in that room. And, and you know, he's, he's, a, he's a big dude, you know, strong guy, you know. And his face was freaking priceless. He's like, dude, something just grabbed my leg and, and freaked mm-hmm. out. Like he was, he was shitting his pants, so, and I, I was just laughing, laughing. And then, sure as hell, like two minutes later, it happened to me. And then I jumped, and I was like, "All right, all right, we're even here. Like, okay, <laughs> like go grab somebody else at this point. Like, leave right. us alone." That's cool. Does she also take jewelry? 
like I, I hear like somebody like no so I was actually going to get into that one that's our Ooh. second child spirit down here uh we don't actually have a lot of in information on him because he doesn't really tell us anything he will steal your stuff and then he leaves so we just named him the earring thief um, yeah. mm -hmm. He usually goes for earrings. So, and it actually got to the point where he stole a lady's diamond earrings that she apparently inherited from her grandmother. Oh, so wow. now we have to give warnings before our tours because she tried to. Oh. Oh. I think she was going to say sue us. I think that's yeah. what's coming now out. they're going to take over the feed. <laughs> yep. We're still live. We are. We're still live. In the flesh. Live and kicking. And we're having a little technical difficulties there. Oh, it's yeah, the ghost. It, uh, yeah, mm -hmm, it, is. it is. Uh oh. She might he, drop he knew out. too. He knew we're talking oh, about earrings. We so he stopped her. <laughs> yeah, it happened right when you were saying that. You know what? I'm going to get that too. So, <laughs> yeah, we sell, try to steal a credit card. Um, AirPods are oh, a big wow. thing now. So, we got to watch out for oh, those. He, he stole my car keys. He likes it the good me 15 minutes. Yeah, I wonder if he's he isn't dumb. He's not dumb. I'll be holding my DR60 real tight. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, oh. There we oh, go. There we go. Oh, I don't have Ooh. it with me. I usually have a lost and found in the office. It's in the courtyard right now. Uh, where if we do get off, something back, late. we'll save it. But okay. usually once it's gone, we never find it again. So you're on your own. And what room is that one? Made them like all piled up, like somewhere hidden, like in the corner of one or something. Like, be so crazy. I'm hoping when we get the restoration process finished, if we have to adjust any of the walls, like piles upon piles. We did get a matching pair of diamond earrings, and if no one claims them, it's a shame to let them just sit in a box. So. Yep. No. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you got yourself a pair of diamond earrings. On dibs. <laughs> <laughs> I remember hearing about a location in Savannah. I don't know if it's a Sorrel Weed House, but when they were restoring it, they found like all this stuff like hidden in the walls. I don't know if maybe that's a different place. So we didn't have any situations like that. Uh, going back to the surgical room real quick, we did have an excavation process done in what would have been the cellar. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's underneath the carriage house. And we did manage to find a few different things, including these, uh, it's hard to see, but these musket bullets that most likely were oh, from wow. the Revolutionary War. So we've got these on display. These are from our property. These are presumed from the Revolutionary War. And Very cool. That's so probably, wow. go, That's so probably been people. inside somebody, right, that they pulled yeah. out of. Yeah. We do have at least one Revolutionary War soldier here, so we think maybe that ha may have something to do with it. But Joe, you think that's who you saw, right? I think I saw a soldier, definitely, um, in the breezeway. Um, I was gonna. I was actually about to ask you if memory serves me right. Um, that the that house, or at least the property at the time, was taken over by the British, uh, correct? By the British soldiers. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, it's very possible that that could be, you know, pulled from a British soldier um, at the, from that time. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, like I said, the siege of Savannah happened right in front of the damn house. Like it's. It, it, it's insane. The, the square right in front. Well, I forget the name of the square right in front uh, Madison, across the street. Madison, Madison yeah. is, is it's active as hell as it is. I mean, it, it, everything. I, I, I say it all the time. In Savannah, you could spit and hit a ghost. It's, Ooh, it's, it's, you know, it's that you know, haunted. It's, Joe and I, like the night before, we were just kind of roaming around on our electric scooters. Yeah, scooter <laughs> we were scooting around. Scoot and crew. We, we, yeah, what, what was that? Calhoun <laughs> Square we went to? We went to, yeah, we went to... Uh, to to Calhoun Square, uh, I I, heard, I don't know if they changed the name already. Um, I know that they were trying to change the name of it. And it yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, allegedly that's that's well not allegedly uh, that was supposed to be a uh, burial ground, mass burial ground for the uh, enslaved uh, people of uh, Savannah, and uh, there are thousands of bodies uh, allegedly uh, buried under the square and around the square under the homes and uh if you've never been to savannah savannah is considered a necropolis like the it is built on top of the dead um there you you're literally walking on on graveyards in uh, in many sections of savannah um so yeah we uh 
we went out there. We got. <laughs> so we're 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 asking. I think we ask, uh, what does the name Oglethorpe mean to you? And sure as hell, we get EVP right back that said Oglethorpe, um, right in in the middle of Calhoun Square. Um, that's a Calhoun Square is it's one of those spots too. Like you have. Uh, 432 Abercorn Street, right on adjacent. Um, you have the Massey School, right? I, I think it's called. Um, mm-hmm. You have the the church right adjacent to that. Um, the Kehoe House is right there. Or the SB House um, is is down that street too. It's it's again Savannah. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's just like oh, right? there's like, like tunnels where pirates used to go in. Yep, Alleg- I, we went there as well. We went there to eat. They, yeah. yeah, yeah, and then Just in the middle of the house, two big dudes on scooters all dressed in black. Oh, yeah, right. El Puma well, at, at two o'clock in the morning, just <laughs> ding, right. so right. tear into the streets. That. I didn't know the cobblestone, doing just, that. you know, just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it must have been a sight to see. Plus, of all our gear on our backs and. <laughs> I'm definitely doing that next time I go. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> just, it was just, so much fun. Just in the so in the fun. in the squares at night, you know, it was like two in the morning. There's nobody around. We're getting EVPs in the squares. We're getting EVPs like, uh, you know, just out by the cemetery. It was it was wild. It was absolutely wild. I got another. Uh, I got another full. Uh, it's, in my opinion, one of the most insane captures I've ever gotten. Um, and we had we were in Calhoun Square, and I'm and I had a camera actually facing the courtyard of 432 Abercorn, um, and it was tilted in a way that you kind of still had um, the Massey School, which is right across the street, um, in in frame. And there is a very fast moving shadow figure that's moving through the courtyard, and it darts across the street, and then you see the these lights flicker. And it looks, it, to me, it looked like muzzle flash. It looked like it, there was three it, it bullet shots. Like, like bullet shots. Yeah, like gunshots. One, two, three. And you see a figure drop. Like, not just get down. It, like, falls over. That's pretty it's like wild. Somebody was just oh. shot there. It's But it was like a shadow figure. Then you see three flashes and then drop. Yeah. Wow. It was, it's, it's insane. And like was, I, it was running away from someone that got like shot. Like a residual. I, like I, residual. I believe so. Yeah, it was it was it was insane. It's it, to me, it's one of the one of the most compelling captures that I've gotten. But you know, I the way that I am, I you know, I put it out there because I wanted people to see, it and I was like, you know, this is up to you. This is what I think this is, and you have at it. Well, Aubrey, Whoa, where, so where cool. you the place is so cool. <laughs> where this are you? So I'm. Uh, I mentioned slightly that we had the musket bullets from the excavation process in the cellar mm-hmm. that is awesome we've never been in there yeah oh, wow. is that closed off for people <laughs> yeah no one is allowed down here unless you're staff and for some reason feel like going down here so Ooh. that is there you go people nice. you're seeing places that peep normal people can't see right that's so cool that's i don't think cool. i don't even take a picture down here and posted it so yeah this is where's this blocked off then, this is <laughs> it's like i'm curious <laughs> I don't know. I just got like a weird vibe, right? Vibe. Yeah. Me too. Like so my cool. right arm. And going like, back are they the digging the right there? My right arm, like just. That's where they would have the... dug yeah, out. So, right in that section. And then going back to the body tunnel situation. Oh, I guess we didn't cover body tunnels. We covered generalized tunnels. So we've got some weird doorways here. Um, oh, wow. Not quite Very sure. Cool why they were blocked off don't know where they led to but mm-hmm. i thought that was interesting too wow did somebody else, did, hold on hold on hold on hold on did somebody did somebody no, none of us spoke right no. while aubrey was talking i heard a male's voice yeah yeah i think i heard that too I, I did... okay uh, all right all right yeah because you're right under the carriage house so all right okay so have they uh, excavated anything interesting down in there lately uh, we only ever did the one excavation. Honestly, if I had a shovel, I don't mind digging to see what else I can find. But that's just me. Mm. That being said, this place does give me the creeps. Um, more yeah. so than I got a metal, property. I got a metal detector. 
Oh, you should bring it. <laughs> Seriously. Imagine and you how guys, many little bullets you oh, find. You got the in creep the, factor. Uh, Someone's behind you. <laughs> in, in the basement area, there was, a, there was another room that we didn't get to. It's, it's right next to the... Um, Oh, I know where you were now. I remember taking a picture of it that was blocked off. Yep. Yeah, it was like a down, like a hole like down that little remember stairs there. That. But in the in the basement area the, uh, next to the surgical office, there was the other room that I guess that was where the food would be prepared or uh, if if memory serves and me. Maybe they run it over on the, in the tunnel. Yeah. Right. Um, now I remember there was a, there's another door there that leads to another area that. I think at the time was being restored or also going through like an excavation or something like that. Has that been um, completed and has anything been found out th out there? Or? So we're going through a lot of situations of trying to get everything done. Uh, this is the linen room that we covered. Uh, most likely this is where the enslaved did the laundry for the shrouds as well as if they had parties upstairs. I'm sorry, I keep glit glitching out for some reason, which is weird because I'm on the floor where the modems are. So this is the best Wi-Fi section. Right. <laughs> they don't want me to talk, apparently. No, so, they don't. It seems like. <laughs> uh, but this is the linen room. We did get that officially finished. Uh, another okay. section that we may potentially one day open up to the public once we figure out what exactly we want to do to it. I'm afraid there aren't lights in here. That's my biggest fear right now. Please don't be mad. I'm going to knock first. Knock first. Always knock first. Knock first, yeah. <laughs> Hello? Housekeeping? <laughs> Do you want me to fall oh, down? There's something going on here, too, so I got lightning. That just is the first thing I see down here. Oh, wow. Um, I think we do have lights for this section. So this is what would have been Dr. Frank's morgue. Uh, okay. So this is where the body storage would have been for it. Here we go. That's what I want to see. So we're still working on getting this section cleared out, but... This would have is right next to Dr. Frank's office, so he mm -hmm. would have, if you, they didn't survive the surgeries, would have been brought in here until body pickup came. Okay. Wow. wow. Very cool. Yeah. You so much amazing place, the vibe man. Looking at the places while you're it's looking so inside cool. while you're walking around. Such an amazing place. I I I love it. I I love that place so much. And yeah. You know, it makes me want to go uh, back. <laughs> yeah. Anytime so anyone asks me, it's like, where do I go invest? I was like, go to Sorrel Weed House. Like, please, yeah, please go. Well, we might be hitting you up soon, Aubrey. All right. I mean, it's not like they're going to go anywhere, and chances are I'm not going anywhere either. So. <laughs> yeah, I want to go there before I die. Par Paraflix episode. Yeah, there you go. That place is so worth it. Yeah. Yeah, Kat, so, I agree. I agree with Kat with her uh, statement there. I was especially when we, when you were in that crawl space. I was uh, yes, I can I, feel I, I, yeah, I literally yeah. felt like I was being grabbed in my arm and while while you were down under underground. Um, yeah, it's like I'm being like lured into the camera in a yeah. weird way. It's, it's like, like come on, come on in. Yeah, come on in. The water's nice. It's it's like I keep getting camera, closer to the there. camera too. Before I was like here, and now I'm like, <laughs> it's like. Very inviting. Yeah. It's very, yeah, cool. All right. So I am officially the last person on the property, last living person anyway. So everybody left? Everyone's gone. It's just me now. So oh, okay. You know, it was just a one hour tour? Me. Yeah, about an hour and 15 minutes is how long it'll last. This one kind of went over, but. Cool. It seemed like it was a good group. It seemed like they were happy and entertained. So that's always good. I hope I didn't. How can you have a bad time, time there? It's fine. It's fine. Weezy, what are you doing? He's like, I want attention, man. No buttholes, Weezy. This is a family show. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you're not the only superstar here. Back off, Weezy. <laughs> Aubrey, can you hear, still hear us? Yep, I got you. Sorry, oh, okay. okay. Technology is not my strong suit. Uh, that's okay. Okay. So, is there any other section that you'd want to see while I'm on here? I think I think we're good, <laughs> and we yeah. uh, covered the and we really 
we really appreciate everything and we appreciate you walking us around showing everything it's very very cool especially during an event yeah mm-hmm. especially at those places that you can't see before like i mean that they're closed off to like like i've never been to the dining room area um just downstairs where we're just at or like you know all of that even upstairs too where like i assume the bedrooms are at but i don't think you can yeah, go upstairs 2025 is when the bedroom should be done so nice Oh, that's that's awesome. Very cool. Just a bit. So yeah, I'm running. Is- I'm running your website on the bottom ticker on our screen. Um, do you want to let people know, like any special events that are coming up? Maybe. I mean, we do have another team here from Georgia that's not too far away from you. Maybe other people that might be interested in coming and checking out the Sorrel Wheat House. So uh, we've got a few different options. We've got the history and architecture tours, which I highly recommend. Every single tour is going to be completely different. No one covers the same stuff. And even a tour guide you get will make a big difference. Uh, Nothing is ever scripted. So it's just whatever you want to say. So history and architecture tours are during the daytime. Uh, They're $8 uh, person if you take a ghost tour as well. If you don't, then they're still only $13 covers a little bit more about the owners that have been here, some of which we may not mention on the paranormal side, going into the ghost tours in the evening, cover more so the people that lived and died here, darker history, which I slightly covered, as well as the paranormal experiences our guests report. For both tours, we do give you some brief time to roam around on your own, take pictures, see if anything happens to you. We do get paranormal experiences reported on a daily basis. So they're not on our payroll. They don't have to interact with us, but the chance of something happening is pretty good. Uh, And lastly will be the investigations. Those are hosted on the weekends, usually Thursday through Sunday. Not at all a guided tour. That's what you guys did. That's all on you to kind of do your own thing. Mm -hmm. And we are starting new events uh, called Ghost Busted. That's for the diehard investigators that want to learn more about the investigative field. So we cover different investigating techniques. You'll have an intuitive that covers old fashioned methods like dowsing rods, pendulums, modern day methods, and then a parapsychologist as well, who will go further into the scientific aspect behind ghost hunting as well as potential debunking. Cool. Very cool. You know, Joe's moving up to Savannah. He said he wants to. <laughs> we may be looking for work up there. In a couple of years, <laughs> oh, God willing. We've got openings. Uh, We've always got openings. I might be well, right I, behind them. You'll be the <laughs> first place that I'm going to go and uh, talk to. <laughs> By the well, way, shout out to Tyler. Like, don't forget um, me. <laughs> Tyler Atkinson's for giving us a shout out. Hey, yeah, thanks, Tyler. We appreciate yeah. it. Yep. And uh, uh, another cool thing that I, uh, that I love that you guys do is um, your Facebook page for for all the guests who who have taken the tours, yeah, um, and investigations that. You know, allows people to share the evidence that they've got that they've captured, and and the fact that you know, uh, I'm sure people noticed it around there. There are IR cameras in every room of that place, right? Um, and that's on their YouTube page on their DVR. They play their DVR um, videos right on your mm-hmm. um, YouTube. No, we are trying to get a new DVR, so we can't record anything right now, unfortunately. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so, but it's all live, right? Yes, if we can do it live, we'll do that too. Uh, so, and if we get any experiences reported in a specific section and someone wants to check back, uh, we are going to try our best to get that new DVR installed this week. And so then we can check back if we get anything good. We'll post the good videos on YouTube as well. We've gotten, again, like EVPs, getting furniture moving. I'm in the women's parlor. We have a cabinet door that occasionally will swing open. It's where we like to store the doll. So we think it's the kids trying to play with her. So definitely a lot of interesting stuff. And even just the guests and what they experience is mind okay, blowing. Very, very, very cool. And that's, yeah. uh, I, I, you know, it's really neat that guests can all come together and go to one uh, page and share their evidence and talk about it and everything. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really neat. Um, so we, yeah, we really appreciate you. And we put your link down there so other people that are watching and listening to this show can, can find it. It's the Surreal Weed House, all one word, uh, dot com. And guys, that's uh, we actually went a half hour over, uh, which I, I th- is awesome. I mean, we uh, we appreciate it, and we got to check out a lot of the cool mm-hmm. things and, and see it live. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up for tonight. And uh, Joe, where can people find you or, or your pod? Tell us about your podcast that you got, Joe. Uh, so I host the Greetings from Florida podcast. Um, 
It's a little bit of history, a little bit of uh, spooky stuff, and a whole lot of uh, just weird stuff that, uh, you know, Florida wouldn't be without uh, without it. So um, check it out. I have uh, episodes one through seven are out, and uh, episode eight will be, hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, out uh, next Friday. Uh, I'll be uh, recording that soon. Yeah. So, um, and uh, it might end up being a two parter because uh, I don't know when to quit writing. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's the hard part. Yeah. yeah, it's once once I dig in and I start finding like all this stuff and it just ties in. It's just it's just so much information. Um, so, uh, yeah. So keep an eye out for that. You can find it on uh, my website www.flowweirdapod.com. Uh, you can also find it on uh, Instagram at Flow Weirdo Pod, and uh, you can find my ghost hunting stuff at Joe Hunts Ghosts on Instagram. And um, there, I usually post just you know some photos of uh, you know stuff us goofing around, hanging out. Uh, I don't really make long form videos. Uh, I leave it to all these guys and uh, and the rest of our teammates because everybody else does such a great job with that. Um, mm-hmm. So. Um, but you'll see me on that most of the time anyway. So, uh, it's, it's, uh, it works out. So, um, yeah, that's where you can find me. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me guys. Aubrey, thanks for, for, uh, sharing some awesome stuff and showing us some new places. Like I, I really can't wait to get yeah. back there and into Savannah period. I, 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 I agree. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm in love with the place. It's, Same. it's, it's a, you know, it, By it's, the a, way, it's a vibe. Joe yeah. going to be in our episode one season two. So you hunted file. The Haunted Files fans, you need to tune in for that when that comes out. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for, mm-hmm. for inviting me. And we got some really that. cool plans for uh, Halloween special as well. So yeah, we do. Be, yeah, cool. it's going to be Franny, different. Franny, where can people find your content and, and your stuff? So you can find me on YouTube, Supernatural Eye. Um, that's where I post my Supernatural Eye uh, videos and everything else. I'm on season two. Uh, working on episode seven, so I'm not giving out the release date quite yet on that, but that's coming out here soon. Uh, also, you can find me on Instagram on supernatural i underscore so supernatural underscore i, and I do have a Facebook page. It's not very that active. It's just more to kind of communicate with my team and find out the events because that's where my team posts all the, the fun events and I can get informed. But other than that, if you want to find me on Facebook, you can. It's just supernatural i. But other than that, that's where you can locate your girl. Perfect. Yeah. Check it out. And for me, yeah. um, the easiest way is just to go to my website. It's FLAParanormalResearcher.com. And I have links out to all my social media. I got a blog there. I got all the newest stuff going on with the haunted files, um, some video clips, different things. Also link to the uh, Ghost Hunter store uh, where you can buy the Delco goggles, the goggles I created for doing sensory deprivation experiments. Um yeah, and make sure you follow WarPartyParanormal.com and all our social media stuff because it's going to show all our upcoming events and things of that nature. We're a paranormal team that helps uh, people that are struggling in with paranormal problems in their homes or residence. We don't charge a dime. We're here to help people, and we do these events where we bring in people from you know from the public to come out and investigate with us to meet us, um, so we can go ahead and build up a rapport with them and help them in residential cases and different things. Um, <clears throat> we have a lot of members, one of the biggest teams in, uh, in Florida, if not the United States. And uh, we appreciate everybody's support and thank you. And I'm going to pass it over to Eric. You said everything. <laughs> no, anyway. Um, yeah. Um, definitely check out the goggles, the ghost hunter store. He's got them restocked. So they're available now and there's more coming. So check that out um aubrey thank you so much right now you look like an actual ghost this is sort of pretty cool <laughs> look what's going on over there can you hear me yeah i actually uh i've got a custom rate made shirt that says it's me i'm the ghost and it's got my hair color it's got a little bath <laughs> oh, there you go is that on your website I, can i buy one no it's a personal one of a oh, kind just for me. okay all right so, awesome by the way, Aubrey, you and your staff, if you're ever in South Florida, let us know. You're more than welcome to come to any of our events as well. Bet I make a ghost trip every single year. I'm All right, cool. constantly somewhere, so I'll add it to my list. Am I making my way through? I'm working on the West Coast right now, and then I'll move, move over. All right, nice. awesome. And we're not too far away. I believe it's like a six-hour drive. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah, and you can find my personal <laughs> stuff at Ghost Hunter of South Florida on IG, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. Also want to let people know that our local or maybe close to local that we are having two events coming up soon. Um, August 25th at the Old Davy Schoolhouse. And it's not just a schoolhouse. They got some historical buildings that have a ton of activity. Um, so get your tickets because that will sell out quick. And then the night right after that, the 26th, Saturday night, will be at Yesteryear Village. And Yesteryear Village, if people don't know, that's like the Disney World of ghost hunting. Because it's a haunted village with all these different buildings that all have <laughs> weird, their own history, their own personalities. The most famous one is the Riddle House that was featured on Ghost Adventures. And that's not even the most haunted house building there. So, yeah, check that up. And then after that, we'll be in full force. We're going to be all over the place. Um, so stay tuned for that. We'll be all over Miami, Broward, West Palm Beach. Um, and Arcadia, we got a... Um, that's a right. Parrot Opera House that uh, Eric and I will be attending uh, for the Haunted Files. and It's War free, Party. people. Yeah, come on out and check us out. Yeah. So, again, we appreciate everybody. Thank you for everybody that's watched, and we'll catch you again next Monday at the same time, same place. Thanks again, Aubrey. Bye Thanks, Aubrey. Peace. Bye, guys.